Okay, so let's do a quick game. It's been a long speech already. Uh, break a little ice, just making sure you guys are not nervous, right? Because I'm talking. <laughs> so let's do a quick question. Uh, if the answer is yes, raise your hand, okay? So how many of you know what a stroke is? Okay, great. And did you know that according to the US CDC, every 40 seconds, one person have a stroke? No? Okay. Do you understand the question? Yes, okay, perfect. Well, let me tell you a story then. So back in the 1990s, if any parents could, they would send out their kids to go study abroad. For me and my brother, it was to the US where we call it our home for the next 20 years. When you're 13, living away from your parents, it was the best time ever. But you have to grow up very quickly because, you know, you gotta go to school, get good grades, graduate, and land a high-paying job. I was attracted to science, so I pursued a doctor degree in pharmacy, and I also got a bachelor degree in science. So I graduated from one of the most prestigious schools, and also worked for one of the biggest pharmacy chain in the US. I was a small part of their billion-dollar operation. But the lesson learned were very valuable for someone without much experience other than a doctor degree in pharmacy. But the path for me was clear. I wanted to basically get out of school, open up my own pharmacy, get married, and have children. That was the flow. Life in the US was predictable, predetermined, and I'm pretty happy. But not until a phone call at four in the morning on October 22, 2012, which changed everything. So early that morning, I got a call from my brother that our father just had a stroke. And he was on his way to the hospital. I thought it was just a dream. In fact, I actually hung up the phone. I thought that if I wake up, then everything would be normal. But it was not a dream. I could still remember it now, where I was on the bed, which position, a morning I could not forget. I kept asking myself, why did this happen to him? He was in his early 60s, very healthy. He played golf all his life. But this happened. So for those of you who don't know, a stroke occurs when there's a blood clot that goes all the way to your brain, and then it bursts there. So when the blood stays in your blood vessel, it helps you function normally. But when it bursts inside the brain, especially the brain, it destroys everything that it touches. Unlike most cells in your body, which regenerates, the brain cell does not. So there's, there's a saying that with a stroke patient, time is brain, which means the faster you arrive at the hospital when you have a stroke, the better the outcome for the patient. So as for my father, one hour post the stroke, he arrived at the hospital. He was unconscious, but still breathing. They did a scan, a brain scan, and it confirmed that he had a major stroke, a burst to the left side of his brain, a very big vessel, which controls your language, controls your calculation, reasonings, and the right side motor function. The surgeon at the time had given him a very slight chance to survive, um, and that an open head surgery is needed to stop the bleeding and also to help lower the pressure in his brain. Due to this uncertainty, our family decided that we want to medevac him to Thailand, because back then, they were equipped with better technology and brain surgeon. So once again, father was rushed from the hospital, from the hospital to the airport, while our family is impatiently waiting for the plane to arrive. By sheer luck, his luck. Actually, you know what? I forgot to tell you that before he had the stroke, he was putting for a birdie. So that was the, the good thing, right? So, but by sheer luck, his passport was expired. And traffic on the way to the, air, to the airport was a nightmare, even with an ambulance. So all of you out there, if you're traveling on the road, bicycles or cars, if you see an ambulance coming by, please make way, because who knows, you could be saving a life there. So long story short, the stroke happened around 5 p.m. that day, and he did not get into a surgery room until 4 a.m. the next morning. Remember, time is brain. So I booked, I booked the first flight from San Diego, California that day when I was leaving, all the way to Bangkok, Thailand. And having a medical background in pharmacy and medical, an understanding of a poor prognosis for a patient, it was by far the longest flight ever. Hours on that plane felt like days. I was imagining the worst possible outcome. I was imagining my mom 
how she feels that the loved one of her life is fighting for his life right now. I was, there's so many negative thoughts that came through my head. I hope for the best and prepare for the worst. I prepare that my father, whom I left when I was 13, may not be alive when I landed in Bangkok. So once I arrived at the airport, I rushed to the hospital. My father was already out of the surgery room and resting at the ICU, where he lays there for a few months, unconscious, but still breathing. He was on a feeding tube and in a coma. Fortunately, there's a happy ending to this story. Fortunately, it wasn't his time to go yet. God gave him another chance to live, but not without any negative consequences. He's still alive today, but forever paralyzed on a wheelchair, with only left side mobility and could not speak for the rest of his life. Again, I kept asking myself, why did this happen to my father? He was healthy, he was only in his early 60s, why? So theoretically, a stroke can be prevented, but why so, if it can be prevented, then why there's so many um, happening, right? According to US, US CDC, like I mentioned earlier, a stroke happens every 40 seconds. So all this time that I've been talking, some, a few people already had a stroke. A stroke is a multifactorial disease that's caused by a combination of high blood pressure, high blood cholesterol, and a very bad luck, and that's what happened to my father. Yes, a stroke can be prevented if one were to monitor the blood pressure and take good care of your blood cholesterol daily. And adding a little bit of exercise doesn't help. It helps. At the same time, you know, after all of this happened, I made a promise to my mother and father that I, I would return back to Cambodia and do whatever I can to help them, to be closer to them, to help them in any way that I can, and also to pos potentially help um, strengthen the healthcare system in our country as well. After my father had a surgery and he's stable now, I went back to the US, I flew back home, I submitted my resignation letter, sold my house and cars, said farewell to all my friends and family there, and I brought only my two dogs, Chu and Mac, and 20 years of memories with me to Cambodia. So on January 31st, 2013, I landed in Phnom Penh, where I now call home. It's been nearly 10 years now since I've been back. In fact, a few more months, it'd be 10 years. I honestly don't know what I wanted to do when I first came here, but I know I wanted to contribute to the positive health outcome to our people. And it's not until I turned back, returned to Cambodia when my curiosity, passion, and drive for entrepreneurship started to bud. I knew I wanted to give back to our country. I knew I wanted to contribute to better access to quality and affordable health care for our people in Cambodia, as well as the ASEAN country. But actually not until 2020, during the peak of COVID-19, when I found my true calling. With a few old friends, we started a health tech company, a company in hopes to bring better health care closer to everyone. We started a startup focusing on digitalizing the pharmacy SME by connecting pharmacies to thousands of products on, on a platform. It's verified and safe. That's the most important. Our vision is to provide, offer a fast, convenient, and most important, safe medication uh, for the pharmacists to purchase from, because that contributes to lowering the, uh, the fake and substandard medications that's available to potentially 16 million people in, in the country here. We also provide, we want to provide better access to quality medicine and affordable medicine to the pharmacy so that they could in turn sell lower, uh, lower but quality medicine, lower price but quality to medicine to millions of people around the country. So in addition to providing low cost and accessible drugs to pharmacists, thanks to our government, we're also working on a very special project, a medical IoT project, where we connect the blood pressure, the blood sugar the, uh, uh, monitor uh, to our mo uh, mobile app. So every time a person tests the medical device, the data would then upload it to our, their, their app. So if you have, an, uh, let's say, high blood pressure or high blood sugar, then the, the app would then send a, an, an automatic message to you. In addition, our team will also call you too, just to make sure that things are okay. So what, what we built is something that I believe will help save life. And I believe that this is the time, this is now, and, and I'm, I couldn't be happier here today. Uh, things that we built so far have saved hopefully many lives in the future. So what happened to my father, I think, could have, could have been prevented if someone were to monitor his blood pressure closely. Um, I know I cannot go back in time to save my father, but if such a simple innovation that could be built 
I know I could save your mother or father in the future from having a stroke also. So as I speak, our team is currently finalizing the latest stage of our development uh, of the medical IoT project. We hope to live the project by the end of this year or early next year. We hope to start saving life by maybe next year. Sounds good, right? Here's a question. Thank you. So being an entrepreneur is not an easy task, I tell you that. Entrepreneurs, we see opportunities when others see obstacles or problems. One must have a lot of passion and drive, and most important, a strong reason why you want to start on this most difficult journey of your life. I'm not going to lie, it's going to be one of the worst journey of your life, but you'll like it, you'll love it. If you're waiting for the right time, the right partner, all the stars to align, forget it, you won't build anything uh, worth living for. Kickstart today. Fell fast, but learn even faster from it. I encourage all of you who have a dream of being a startup and entrepreneur to roll up your sleeve today and really go in there and solve real life problems because the best healthcare solution of tomorrow are all dependent on you today. So I do believe that things happen for a reason. Believe in the process, believe in the hard work and determination. If my father didn't have the stroke, I don't think I'd be standing here talking to you today. If my father didn't have the stroke, I don't think I'd be contributing to living the dream that I wanted to do, to be an entrepreneur, to contribute to better health care for our people here. This is my story, and I hope you too can contribute to saving many lives. Together we could do all things. Join us now for the better health care for our people. I challenge you, and I dare you. Start your journey today. Your time is now. Live a life worth living, because you only have one life to live, but many to save. Thank you very much.